Thank you for joining us. Our show today will focus again on friendship and diplomacy, and our special guest is Annette Klein, the Consul General of the Federal Republic of Germany to Florida, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. She will share her thoughts on the friendship, cultural, and economic links between Germany and Israel following these messages. Life Extension Magazine brings you new discoveries in health and anti-aging. Our science-based research and supplements are so advanced, they're many years ahead of the medical mainstream with quality control standards that exceed FDA mandates. Life Extension has covered groundbreaking medical research for more than 35 years. For your health and future, you deserve the best. Learn more at lifeextension.com. The space to dream, to create, to build, any room in your home can become a comfortable space that's all your own with a carrier ductless system. There's simply nothing more efficient. With comfort controls you can set with your smartphone, filters for cleaner, fresher air, and humidity settings that are easy to adjust. It's just one more way Carrier helps make you comfortable, however you define it. Carrier, turn to the experts. When I was young, it seemed that life was so wonderful. A miracle, oh it was beautiful, magical. And then they showed me a world where I could be so deep and oh intellectual, cynical. Find magic again. Sprout by HP. With Intel RealSense technology inside, now you can bend the rules of creativity outside. <laughs> With us now is Consul General Annette Klein. A real privilege and pleasure to meet you. Pleasure is all mine. Please tell us, what is the role of the German consulate here in Miami? The role of all German diplomatic and consular missions in general is threefold. The first is to assist Germans who reside in Florida, Puerto Rico, or the US Virgin Islands, or who come here as tourists, and there are lots of them. The second very important task is to promote economic cooperation between Florida, Puerto Rico and the US Virgin Islands and Germany. And the last part and the most fun part is to give people living here a very comprehensive idea of what is happening in Germany right now, um, why it is happening and uh, why it might be interesting for them or affect them and thus take another step in strengthening the transatlantic relations. Very interesting. It so happens my parents were born in Germany and I was born in England and I'm, I love Germany. I love the culture, I love the scientific achievements, literature, classical music all, and everything else of course. But. Um, you have a very interesting background. I'd love you to share with our audience some of your background. You've been in different countries. Please share with our audience some of your history. I have a very varied number of assignments. I've been to places like New York, uh, focusing on the United Nations, uh, whose headquarters are there. I've been to Mexico, to Afghanistan, to Bosnia and Herzegovina, lots of places and these main objectives were always the same. That is the fascinating part of my profession that uh, you get to work with people wherever you go and you learn a lot about your own country by taking in um, other people's perceptions or ideas about your country and talking to them and exchanging um, ideas. My last two assignments prior to Miami were to Gdansk, 
Poland and Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. So you can see it's very different angles all the time. Most fascinating. And here in Miami, of course, uh, you are in a different environment of uh, different cultures, Hispanic, uh, Jewish, and uh, of course, Americans uh, were born here. And um, tell us about your relationship here at the consulate with the large Jewish community. I'd like to start out that we're meeting in the year where Israel celebrates its 70th anniversary of statehood. And uh, whenever I th come to think of it, I'm so awed that after the horrors of the Shoah, Germany and Israel came to work really well together, to become allies and partners and even friends. And that's why for me it is very important to work with uh, Jewish communities, temples, with Jewish organizations and um, for example the American Jewish Committee who uh, works against um, discrimination and racism all over the board which is very important to me and um, we work together with them on a wide variety of events um, talks after an interesting movie, talks on specific subjects. We organize exhibits together with them. And for me, it is always a, a very warm feeling when people tell me about their experiences. But of course, um, many times these events are uh, an emotional challenge even for me who didn't live through the experience in any way. But this makes certainly Miami, South Florida very special for me. And the friendship between Germany and Israel is outstanding. In fact, uh, Yitzhak Rabin visited, uh, I think uh, one other Israeli leader actually was the first foreign leader to address the Bundestag. And in fact, uh, your foreign minister Heiko Maas said he became involved in politics, especially because of thoughts of what occurred in that tragic time in history. And I personally cannot in any way have any negative feeling with regard to the German people. What happened in the past is a tragedy, and uh, people today are a different generation. The friendship is what's most important. Yeah. That's my personal view. Well, thank you. And uh, now that you mention Isaac Rabin, I think he was the first um, leading um, Israeli politician who visited West Germany when I was a very young teenager, I think. So uh, it had an impact on me and I remember that he visited uh, uh, the Federal Republic of Germany, but what was called West Germany at that time by some, and he revisited. I think he was one of the very first foreign dignitaries who visited Germany after unification. And I think that is very special. This is all very interesting and I'd like us to continue, Annette, but we have to pause for these commercial messages. We'll be right back. We're back with Annette Klein. Annette, I'd like to ask you a little bit about some other areas of interest you have. That of conflict resolution and probably the most critical of all, which is the environment and climate change. Thank you. Personally, I think that uh, diplomacy and environmental questions, climate change, are very closely linked. They're the challenges of our time. And Germany's objective is to counteract violent conflicts, if at all possible, before they're happening, and thus to avoid that people have to go through the dire consequences of these conflicts. And the lack of water is a very serious question. Countries may also lose access to other important resources, more or less rain. 
Of course, the first responsibility of a government is to protect its citizens. So we have to make sure that people get the resources they need without them having to fight for. We have, the world has to find a way to overcome the consequences of climate change. We cannot unchange the climate change, but we can find ways to deal with its consequences. And to achieve security for Germany and for other countries, Germany favors a comprehensive approach. I was thinking about how inspiring it is when we see intelligent solutions implemented anywhere in the world in, in so many different areas of need, whether it is environmental, whether it's technology, education, and so forth. Please share some more of your thoughts on that. That is actually an area where uh, German and um, US, or in our case, Floridian um, institutions and companies can really partner very well because uh, we're both countries at the forefront of technological uh, development. And uh, there is one uh, thing very special to Florida. It's home of the only Max Planck Institute outside of Europe, the Max Planck Florida Institute in Jupiter, very close to the I-4 corridor where lots of things are happening in Florida. Very interesting Max Planck Institute in the forefront of so many areas of technology and education and research. Really amazing. Tell us more about life in Berlin these days. I really want to visit, I haven't been there in ages. And there what wonderful museum is there and of course the Holocaust Museum as well. There are many museums and memorial sites in Berlin that um, have as a subject one of the many facets of uh, the Holocaust. People who have been very skeptical before going to Berlin about these sites, about uh, Germans, came back to uh, Florida and told me about their experience and about how amazed they were about these museums or sites they visited. And that, of course, makes me very happy because I can sympathize with their um, reservations of going in to Berlin or to Germany in general. And um, they also tell me that they appreciate the sensitivity um, that is being brought to the subject and they like seeing children and young people going to these places and um, inquiring about the situation. And I was very appreciative of all these comments um, that I'm receiving because we have to face it that there are only a few witnesses left and it becomes more and more abstract. Uh, young Germans don't have anybody anymore to talk about the time before and during uh, the Second World War. We have to come up with new ways to have them research more and acquaint themselves with the issue. It is important to make sure that it's not some historical fact that goes further behind the past, but that we use the impulse of, for example, um, memorials and museums to remain vigilant, to make sure that something similar does not happen again. And I'm quite happy that people are very creative in coming up with ways to educate uh, young people in particular. Sometimes it's funny and at first I'm a bit shocked by the idea. The Anne Frank Center in the Netherlands, for example, is working on a cartoon version of Anne Frank's diary. And when I heard about that, it took me aback at first, and then I thought, no, you have to catch the interest of the young people first, and then they can read the real diaries, and they probably will. It is also for me important that you do not have only museums and memorial sites, but that the people, the society, take up initiatives to 
keep the memory alive so that whenever we walk through Berlin, for example, we get little nudges to think about that time and to realize how much part of the German society Jews were before the Nazis came. I don't know whether you heard about the initiative Stolpersteine. Um, they put small stones in the pavement where they note who lived in that building or in the area, um, of course with permission of um, uh, the family. And this makes it very easy to realize that you are in a, an area in the center of Berlin where many Jewish families lived and they were integrated. They were integrated only um, a few months ago during an event um, with, um, with AJC, I think, I learned that one of the children books authors that I loved in my childhood actually perished in Auschwitz. The books she had written were about a Christian German girl and I read all her books in the right order growing up and when, when I received that inf piece of information from one of her relatives, it came as a real shock to me. But I think these shocks are healthy because it shows what we did to ourselves, losing this part of Germany. It has changed. It has changed us too. And we don't want that to happen to anybody again. Of course not. Learning the lessons of history, but looking to the present and the future. My grandfather, Paul Blumenfeld, was a Rechtsanwalt, a lawyer in Berlin. And I would like more focus to be on the present and the future. And the friendship between Germany and Israel and the Jewish people is just uh, excellent and uh, the cooperation, of course. Tell us more about that. Um, I particularly like the exchange programs between Israel and Germany, and also between the US, Israel, and Germany, because um, they are usually eye-opening. I told you about um, what uh, people I met here in Florida told me about their recent visit to Berlin. But I also remember my uh, first visit to Israel um, more than 20 years ago because it is um, very different to see um, uh, a map during a, a news hour showing Israel and a lot of Mediterranean to being in Israel and driving from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem in 45 minutes. So I think visiting and talking to each other is very important. Even when we perhaps feel that for some reason we may not share political or economic or, or whatever views, it is important to talk to each other and to realize that's okay. This of course is absolutely correct. That is the way it is. And points of view and sharing ideas, stimulating thought, all very important. And speaking of points of view, our main sponsor has his views and greater interest than ever in promoting new perspectives on health and research into addressing the diseases of aging and uh, asked me to give you his book called Pharmocracy. But I would like to change topics again and ask you to share with us your plans for the future. You've been in Afghanistan, you've been all over the world. What next? That's easy. Uh, I, uh, this is my third posting abroad in a row. I've been to uh, Gdansk, Poland, Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, and now in Miami in the United States. And I'll be reassigned to Germany next year. While, of course, I love being abroad, I also appreciate uh, the opportunity to really get reacquainted with Germany again. It's different, even now with uh, TV, radio, social media. I get lots and lots of information about Germany. Uh, the 
country I'm to represent uh, here in Miami, but living there tops it. So after that refresh, of course, I hope to be posted abroad again and bring um, even more strength to uh, the information I share with people wherever I'm being assigned uh, after Germany. Annette, I'd like to tell you this has been most interesting. I want to thank you so very much. You're very and welcome. I hope to visit you in Germany sometime next year when you're back. I'll give you my address and phone number. Thank you. I'll be right back. Berlin stands upon the vast European plain in northeastern Germany, on the banks of the river Spree. Berlin's history has been one of triumph and tragedy, tyranny and transformation. Brought to her knees by two world wars and then divided throughout much of the Cold War, Berlin has re-emerged, blossoming into one of the world's economic and creative powerhouses. With a population of only three and a half million, Berlin enjoys an air of spaciousness not found in many other European capitals. Berlin is an incredibly green city, both physically and politically. At times it feels like the city was built just to fill in the gaps between its many parks, forests and lakes. With hundreds of miles of bike paths, stringent traffic regulations and an absence of hills, Berlin is the perfect city to explore on foot or by bicycle. A legacy of Berlin's checkered history is a cityscape of every imaginable architectural style. From the Gothic to the Baroque, from the Socialist to the Futuristic, yet somehow it all works, magnificently. The Brandenburg Gate rose in the 18th century as a symbol of peace. It was battered in the Second World War then isolated by the division of Berlin before becoming the rallying point during the joyous days of the reunification. A block to the north, the Reichstag, is also a symbol of a Berlin reborn. Gutted by fire in 1933 and reduced to rubble during the fall of Berlin, today visitors can climb the Reichstag's transparent dome for a bird's eye view of the city. Occupying an entire city block is the Holocaust Memorial, an unsettling reminder of the consequences of letting the roots of intolerance take hold. Rolling out before the Brandenburg Gate is the Tiergarten, a 500-acre tapestry of forests, woodlands and canals. The Tiergarten is also home to the Victory Column, the Soviet War Memorial and Bellevue Palace, the official residence of the German president. But her most famous resident of all is the Berlin Zoo. Featuring over 1,500 species and enclosures that look more like natural habitats, the Berlin Zoo is one of the most visited zoological gardens in Europe. Berlin is a city of churches. Retaining its war-damaged spire, the Kaiser Wilhelm Memorial Church is a shining example of Berlin's ability to honor its past while forging a bold architectural future. But perhaps Berlin's most striking place of worship is the Chapel of Reconciliation, the spiritual heart of the Berlin Wall Memorial. Near the center of Berlin, another section of the infamous wall has become a memorial of a more colorful kind. Featuring the work of 100 international artists, the Eastside Gallery is one of the largest outdoor art exhibits in the world. And the theme? Freedom, of course. 
Featured in countless spy novels and films, Checkpoint Charlie was the Cold War's most famous border crossing. The adjacent museum explores the history of the checkpoint and the ingenious ways in which Berliners defected from east to west. The Cold War years remain an endless source of fascination for Berliners and visitors alike. At the DDR Museum, visitors are invited to rummage through the drawers and cupboards of its exhibits, which recreate life in East Germany during socialist rule. Directly opposite the DDR Museum is Museum Island, a chance to step even further back in time. Now an internationally protected heritage site, the island is home to five museums, each one specializing in different periods of the arts and sciences. The Berlin Cathedral also stands on Museum Island. Once in sight, climb the wide 270-step staircase to the observation deck and breathe in the colors of the city below. Berlin is also a city of great civic squares. The Bibelplatz is home of the Humboldt University. Alexanderplatz became a showcase for Soviet architecture throughout the Cold War. The Fernsehturm, a futuristic 1960s TV tower, still evokes mankind's eternal quest to reach for the stars. Potsdamer Platz was once known as the Times Square of Berlin. Since reunification, the area has regenerated into a visionary space where all Berliners can celebrate their city together as one. Welcome to the Berlin of the 21st century, a city proving to the world that tolerance, creativity and passion can bear the most incredible fruit. Life Extension magazine brings you new discoveries in health and anti-aging. Our science-based research and supplements are so advanced, they're many years ahead of the medical mainstream with quality control standards that exceed FDA mandates. Life Extension has covered groundbreaking medical research for more than 35 years. For your health and future, you deserve the best. Learn more at lifeextension.com. This concludes our special show for today. Thank you for being with us. The preceding program was sponsored by RCP Productions Incorporated and Friends of the Shalom Show.